Criticism of the Biden administration's handling of the crisis is coming mostly from Republicans. But Minnesota Representative Dean Phillips is one of the few Democrats raising questions. I spoke to him a short time ago. And Congressman Phillips joins us now. Thank you so much for your time this morning. Good to be with you, Esme. All right. You are, of course, on the House uh, Foreign Affairs Committee, and you have raised some concerns about what has happened in Afghanistan. You're really one of the few Democrats that put it out there. As a member of that committee, what answers do you have? What questions do you have about what's happened? Well, Esme, uh, first, as a gold star son of the Vietnam War, I lost my birth father, Ari, uh, during the Vietnam conflict. And like the 58,000 families that uh, uh, suffered that time, now we have 2,300 plus families suffering losses from Afghanistan, wondering if it was worth it, wondering why the greatest nation on earth uh, can't seem to learn its lessons. Uh, this is not a Democratic failure or a Republican failure. Uh, it's an American failure. And on the Foreign Affairs Committee, uh, we have a distinct responsibility to assess what went wrong, uh, most importantly, ensure that we don't make those same mistakes moving forward. But I will say, as may that our most important work at this very moment shouldn't be throwing stones, casting blame. It should be ensuring that every single American that remains in Afghanistan that is seeking an exit and refuge, uh, not to mention those who supported our efforts for so many years, uh, are, are able to get out of the country. That is our foremost, most important responsibility. After that, uh, we will assess very deeply what went wrong, uh, hold those to account who should be, uh, and ensure that we do better next time. And that also includes, Esme, the United States Congress uh, taking a more pronounced role uh, in managing through these conflicts in the future. Uh, we should have uh, debated, deliberated, and approved uh, the Trump withdrawal plan. And I think we should have done the same with the Biden uh, execution of that plan. Congress has a responsibility uh, to play a bigger role to ensure these things do not happen uh, the way it's transpired this time around. Let me ask you, uh, you almost single-handedly appeared to have tried to get people out of Afghanistan. You were one of the first members of Congress to put on your Twitter feed your office phone number, and you ended up getting phone calls from around the country. Your wonderful staff was kind of overburdened. Tell us about that. Yeah, almost 1,600 people now. Uh, we have helped add to the list of the State Department to uh, help exit Afghanistan. But Esme, it's important to note that that's not me doing it. Yes, I tweeted it. Yes, I'm advocating. Yes, I'm doing as much as I possibly can. Uh, but I want to salute my extraordinary staff uh, who have been doing extraordinary work uh, since August 14th, have helped seven families get out of Afghanistan. We have about 50 some open cases uh, with over 450 individuals currently on which we're working. And this is playing out in Democratic and Republican offices all across the country, uh, especially young staffers uh, doing some of the most important work they may ever do in their careers right now because lives are on the line. And I want to salute them. Uh, uh, throughout every office in the country, everybody working their very best uh, to do what's right and uphold our honor and obligation. Uh, there have been two big budget bill, or two big spending bills up for consideration, the budget bill and also the infrastructure bill. You have raised concerns from the start that small businesses have not gotten a fair shake there. You made a statement uh, recently that suggests maybe you, your mind has changed, but what is your concern there? No, my mind has not changed. Uh, a lot of small businesses did get support and a fair shake. Uh, the problem is there are hundreds of thousands that have not yet because we did not allocate enough resources to accommodate their needs. Uh, restaurants and gyms, uh, the live events industries, hospitality, uh, there are industries that have been shut out of the relief programs. And I believe we have a responsibility and obligation to ensure equity and fairness in these programs. I, I spoke with the speaker, uh, Nancy Pelosi, two times. Uh, before our votes in Washington last week, uh, made it clear uh, that a small business relief package was integral if she hoped to secure my support uh, for those initiatives. And I received assurances that we will be working on those uh, during the coming weeks uh, and do what is right uh, at a time of some distinct need in the small business world. You were very involved in a bill passed that has to do with trade and China. And you had a number of measures that were included in that House bill one of them was a concern uh, and more oversight and reporting on the fentanyl uh, trade in China and how it affects people here in, in Minnesota and across the country. Tell us about that. 
Well, we have to acknowledge the truth. Uh, our policies over some generations now, again, not Democratic failures, Republican failures, American failures in policy uh, have advantaged China in ways that are very detrimental to the American economy, to American people. Uh, and in the case you just referenced, fentanyl and other drugs, uh, there as well. Uh, it is time that we uh, regain uh, our stature. Uh, the Congress has to stand up uh, and affect policy uh, that level the playing field. I'm tired of American businesses being ripped off, their IP stolen, uh, the hurdles to do business in China are growing by the day. Uh, while we try to level the playing field around the world, uh, China is taking advantage of it. And I do not want to have an enemy in China. We do not need to have an enemy in China. Uh, it will be a competitive relationship, but it is time that we level set things uh, and ensure uh, that our policies protect Americans, American businesses, uh, and Americans from uh, terrible drugs like fentanyl. Well, Congressman Dean Phillips, it's always a pleasure. Thank you so much for your time this morning. Thank you, Esme.